Hey guys, Justin Williams back here with College Fishing 101. And in the previous video, I just did the review of the Pelican Catch 130 HD. And in that review, I only covered the boat itself, the actual kayak. And I mentioned in it that I was going to do a separate review of the hydro drive system. And that's what I'm doing right now. So this is the, Kel the, the Pelican high drive system. It is a pretty much a direct copy of Hobie's Mirage Drive. However, they did a little bit some different things with the fins and some different things with the cables to make it their own. Um, Hobie's patent went out, so Pelican pretty much just copied it, which I mean they're 100% allowed to do it, allowed to do. Um, starters, it does propel the kayak extremely well. I'm not discrediting any abilities of uh, this system, this system is extremely efficient when it's in the, the kayak and hooked up correctly. Um, however, I do have some problems with build quality. And when I say that, it's not as much the quality of the materials, it's just what they've done to install them. So, for starters, these cables, these orange cables, are what connect the fin gears to the pedals. And when you move, the pedals forward and backwards, the fin moves left and right and it propels you through the water. Those cables, when you buy this brand new, are ridiculously tight or taut, however you want to pronounce it, um, to the point where it's almost impossible to take them off. Pelican's factory level of tension on them is ridiculous. Um, it took me, the first time I had to replace a fin, it took me almost 40 minutes to an hour just to get the, the cables off, which it should never do. I understand they don't want them coming off, but it shouldn't take that long to take a simple bolt off. Because all you have to do is unscrew a nut, loosen it up, loosen it to enough where it pops off, and then you can replace it. But what was happening was is that nut is a locking nut, and it was so tight on there that you had to have one side on the something grabbing on the cable and something grabbing on the nut for it to twist off. Regardless, it took a really long time to do. Second issue I have is the fins. Or let me say the fin rods that slide in and out of these. These fins are extremely delicate when it comes from factory. I have already broken two clean off of this system. And the problem is, is when you break them, these fins screw into the gear systems right here in the front and the back. So these right here are screwed into the actual gears. Pelican puts Loctite or some kind of locking element into these rods and locks them up in there. So when they break, they shear at the end of the housing. So there's no way to extract the top end of the bolt that's broke off into the, the gear head. You can go buy a new fin all you want to, but the problem is, is that you have to get a new gear system. And Pelican doesn't sell just the gear, or the, the, the bracket gear thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm not going to discredit. Pelican uh, customer service was really, really uh, friendly to me. I called them up, told them my situation, they sent me a brand new um, drive system, and they sent me two extra fins. But I noticed something, is when I put that new gear system on and put that new fin back on, it didn't have Loctite in it then. So I ended up breaking another one, because these fins break off extremely easily, and I think it has something to do with the quality of the rods that come from Pelican. I've had this front one. I ended up having a jerry rig the day before a tournament and we just went and bought a steel rod from the hardware store and epoxied it in there and it hasn't broken, it hasn't even done, it hasn't even considered breaking. When I put the new fin on the back, the back fin broke, which kind of complexed me because if it was going to break off anywhere you'd think the front one would break because it would hit first, but it didn't. And I think a lot of that has to do with the build, with the, the rod quality of what they give to you. Um, these rods aren't going to come out, so there's no need 
to Loctite them up into the, the mountain brackets. So what I did is when they sent me a new housing, I just took that old house, the, the old gear track off, slid the new gear track onto my already built one because what they didn't send is they didn't send the pedals. So all they sent was this center part right here. It was all they sent. Um, and I've been using that ever since. And again, I don't have any issues with it. But when people are breaking fins just by hitting clay, you know there's a problem. And I, I, I'm well aware that this is not meant to get hit. If you're in shallow water, you shouldn't have it out. I'm aware of that. But there should be some, some give to it. Um, it should be strong enough to, I don't feel, I, 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 to feel comfortable enough for me to pull on this, but I honestly don't because I'm afraid it would break. This front one, I don't, I could, I could, the front one ain't gonna break off. But the back one, which is the Pelican one, very well might. So, um, as a system, it is fantastic. And as a customer service, Pelican is top notch because I went in there, called him. Um, they were back ordered at the time, so it took me a little bit longer to get my new part in, but I was able to jerry rig it enough to use it during that tournament. But, I mean, they did send me a new part and two extra fins and everything else, and it just screwed right in there, and it was not a big deal. But it's the quality is what I was what I was aggravated about. You shouldn't have to worry about breaking fins in one foot of water, because I mean that's what we that's why we buy kayaks. We buy kayaks for shallow water to get back into places where a boat can't get to. So to be afraid of even using this system. In shallow water because you're afraid you're going to break something kind of defeats the point however um i'm not taking away from anything from the system yeah, like i said it's very efficient on the water this thing will probably get up to almost three or four miles an hour depending on what the weather chop is and the wind direction is so i mean it's extremely efficient and i like it a lot it's just there's two or three nitpicky things that really really aggravate me and when you're spending fifteen hundred dollars on a kayak those things kind of matter now i do realize that this is the lower end of pedal drive kayaks most systems are going to cost you over two thousand so i get that there's a, some leniency there and they didn't cut out on the money out on the kayak because the kayak itself is extremely nice so they had to cut that money here somewhere in here and i i have to imagine it's got to be to do with this so well guys uh, like the video, share the video if this is in something you enjoyed, so something that you might be interested in. Um, I've had Pelican kayaks pretty much ever since I started kayak fishing, so I'm not going to stay away from that. This is not going to keep me from not using this system. It's just something that people who are interested in buying one might want to understand and think about when it comes to how much you're willing to go through. Uh, if you're new to my channel, subscribe. I'm trying to try to put out a video every two to three days. And if you're here for my channel, well guys, like I always say, like and share these videos. If you're interested or if you think this video was helpful in your, in your decision on whether or not you should buy a Pelican Catch 130HD, um, the kayak itself is fantastic, but when it comes to the quality of the high drive, it's it's <clears throat> it lacks in some areas. It's in a very efficient system and it works very well, but for me, it's a little fragile to say the least. Well, like and share this video if you liked it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're new. If you're not, welcome back. I'm going to try to post videos every two to three days. Bye, guys.